We want to give a good offering tonight. Amen. I trust that you came to church with an offering. Amen. So please take out a good offering. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Know that this service is also supporting the Healing Jesus campaign. So let's give generously. Amen. All right. Let's pray. Lift up your offering and let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for another time in your presence to hear your word. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We pray that this offering will go a long way to support the work of the kingdom. We pray that, Lord, your will be done tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive Sister Ida. Praise you, Lord.
abide in me and my words abide in you ask what you will it shall be done unto you if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask what you will it shall be done unto you
There's a train coming. You don't need no baggage. Just step on board. All you need is faith. Just to hear the diesel humming. You don't need no ticket. Just thank the Lord. Ooh. People get ready. There's a train to Jordan. You don't need no baggage. All you gotta do is get on board. All you need is a little faith. Just to hear the diesel humming. And you don't need no ticket. Just thank the Lord. I know I'd rather believe 
Let's pray. Father, we are thanking you for another opportunity to be in your house today. We pray that you guide us by your Holy Spirit. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Why we... Can I have some volume up here? Why... We must be soul winners. All right. Reason number one. Today I'm on the third reason why we must be soul winners. First reason is because it is a great commission, command. Amen. Amen. Number two. Hello. Sound. Number two, it, we must be soul winners because this is a great work, soul winning. Number three, we are be soul winners because we're created to carry out the work of soul winning. Okay. Number four, we must be soul winners because it is wise. To be a soul winner. Amen. Turn with me to Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. And we are going to look at verse number 30.
the fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. Amen. Amen. And he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. Now, the next and very important reason why you must be a soul winner and you must have soul winning at the very center of your life is because it is wisdom. It's, all, it's just wisdom to be a soul winner. All right? Now, wisdom is a very elusive item. Amen. And you are better off believing in the words that are said. You must fasten your heart to the concept of soul winning very deeply. If for no other of the 120 reasons which I wrote in my book and I hope to preach it for more than 900 times more than all the 120 reasons through. So this is my second time. <laughs> yeah. I've got a lot, a lot of more preaching on this topic. Amen. If not for anything, if for all the reasons don't work for you, this reason must work for you. And what is this reason? Is that it is wisdom. A person who wins souls is a wise person. Yeah. And this wisdom is elusive because... Most people don't catch it. They just don't catch it. They don't get it. People have a mind that he that does business is wise. He that builds a house is wise. He that earns a lot of money is wise. Everything else is wise. He who has a nice car is wise. He who goes to school is wise. He who has two degrees is wise. He who has a degree is wise. He who has been to America is wise. He who went to Harvard University is wise. He who went to Legon is wise. He who went to school in tech is wise. He who did Akito is wise. He who did medicine is wise. He that works for Deloitte and Touche is wise. He that works at Barclays Bank is wise. He that works at Standard Chartered Bank is wise. He that works in the United Nations is wise. He who works for FAO is wise. He who is a cardio cardiologist is wise. He who is a psychiatrist is wise. He who is a heart surgeon is wise. He who is a psychiatrist is wise. All these are wise, except the one that is in the Bible that is wise. <laughs> That is what I'm trying to explain to you that I didn't write the Bible and I, when I was born, I was actually given one. And I had nothing to do with its writing. And when I started reading it, I found out that he that wins souls is a wise person. Wow. Amen. 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 Now, wisdom is very elusive. And the way it is, 
you can easily live your whole life. What's going on? You can easily live your whole life and not be wise. Now, <laughs> if you are wise, you will be wise for yourself. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. So, if you take up the mantle of soul winning, which means becoming a minister of the gospel, which means when you are a minister of the gospel, winning souls still, because you, your mind is to win a soul to Christ, not to make people prosper. But to win souls to Christ, to salvation. Okay? If, if that is what you do, you're doing it for yourself. It's for you. If I win souls, if I'm wise enough to win souls, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. This is what we call privatization. Yeah. Because when you work for the government, if thou be wise, thou be wise for the government. So that is why people don't work hard when they work for an ambiguous and amorphous entity which they don't really see or know what they are working for. Abaye Juma. Is that how they say it? Abaye Juma. The work of the government. It's like you are working for the air. Nobody knows what you are doing and why you are doing it. And that is why all over the world the concept of privatizing even the work of the government, do you see, has been encouraged. Private sector development. You must have heard it on the news. Somebody must have said it somewhere. Because human beings are selfish and greedy. And the work of a president or a leader of the country is not to cure the selfishness because the work of a leader and of a wise person is not to solve things that cannot be solved. One day I was watching a leopard. It went out to find some food. And it got an impala. Impala is a type of antelope. It chased and what followed it throughout the night. And then finally, around 4 a.m., it got it. <laughs> when he caught it and he had stabilized it, usually they carry, the leopards carry the uh, catch up a tree and actually eat it in a tree like monkeys. That's what leopards do. But before it had the opportunity to take the antelope, because the antelope 
scraped a little when it was caught. And there was a bit of noise. Some hyenas whose work is to eat other people's food. (laughs) And whose work is to take what others have found. Suddenly surrounded the leopard. Now, even though the leopard is bigger than a hyena, far bigger, when the leopard assessed the number of hyenas, do you understand? And the sort of problem that is being called upon to solve, he decided to leave it. And he ran away. And left the food for the hyenas. When I saw that, I received wisdom. I said that, look, there are some battles you don't fight. There are some problems you can never solve them. You can never solve them. So it's better to run. So a leader of a country right, is not supposed to correct the selfishness of the people. When I hear NPP saying NDC is selfish or greedy, I laugh almost my hair falls off. And when I hear NDC saying that NPP is greedy and selfish, I laugh and almost my skin comes off. Because it's like somebody pointing in the mirror and saying, you are bad. (laughs) You are bad. You are looking at the mirror and you are bad. (laughs) Are you listening to me? So the work of a government is not to cure the greed. And the selfishness. Because you cannot cure. You are not a church. A president is not a pastor. And the the government is not a pastor. You cannot cure it. Do you understand? You have to find a way to work with the greediness and the selfishness and wickedness of human beings to channel their wickedness and their greediness in such a way that it benefits other people as well. That is what you are supposed to do. And that idea of that, this is how they are. So you, you, you don't cure, you don't lecture them, you don't give them lectures. You don't teach them. You, 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 you create a system so that the person's greed will drive him let me preach. Don't speak when I'm preaching, please. You, the, the person's greed drives him, and then what he does benefits others. That's right. That is what is called privatization. Yeah. Where the people are now made to do the same work, but it is for you. And when you do it, you will benefit. And when you benefit from it, you feel you are benefited, but the government is also sitting there to collect tax or some other things. As your greed drove you to get more money, it created money for others. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, it created jobs for people, which the government was trying to do. Somebody's greediness in building a hotel. He already has one. He has two. He's building third, fourth. He's so greedy. He wants more. He's a millionaire. He wants more. But allowing this person's greed to lead him on will create more jobs for more people. And in the bank, the, when there's one hotel, you have to buy bananas from banana seller to make whatever, oranges from orange seller, water from water and sewage, electricity from whatever, toilet roll from toilet roll makers, uh, soap from soap makers, bed sheets from bed sheet makers, pillowcase from pillowcase, towels, ash foam, mattresses, uh, wooden carpenters to repair the wardrobes, uh, electricians to repair the electricity, plumbers. 
to repair the toilet, a plumbing, a Zoom lion will come to collect the, the, the rubbish, weeding people to weed. So many people have got something to do by one person's greed that you have allowed his greed to be controlled in an area. And this is what even the world has understood. Because you see, the evidence that in our country, the people who are managing this nation and have been managing it for years, the evidence that they are not really able is not in what they say. You don't have to look these days. You see, in heaven, they don't ask you to speak. These days, I don't even want to hear people speaking. It's true. Don't speak at all. Your works are speaking for you. It's been 55 years. Stand outside the church and see if there's a road. Stand 10 miles from the center of the city and see if there's a road. Everywhere. Confusion. No water. No light. No everything. You just wonder what is controlling the place. It's marvelous. Yeah. It's not about what people say and their speeches they give. It's what have they done. Don't speak again. We are all, we are all Ghanaians. We are all here. Yeah. Do you understand? So I'm saying that the council, and it's unfortunate that if you are a rich man in Ghana, rather you may be persecuted. The people who will create jobs for the toilet paper makers, the septic tank collectors, the masons, the whatever, they are hounded out of the country one by one. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm just explaining that scripture. If thou be wise... Thou shalt be wise for thyself. And this is the concept of privatization. That do it for yourself. If you do it, you will benefit. If you work, you benefit. If you don't work, you don't benefit for yourself. And that's how it must be. Because we are all greedy. And we are all selfish. And that is why lay pastors, many of them don't work. Sometimes when they belong to a big church, they don't even work well. They just hide behind the system and they don't really work well because they don't see themselves as really pastoring the church. It's true. So they hide and they play games and so on. But sometimes when they are sent out to start a branch on their own, they see them waking up because it's like they realize that when I do the visitation, I'm doing it for myself to see the people sitting there on Sunday. So we, we have channeled the greediness or selfishness of the lay pastor into just privatization. Go and do your church there. You yourself will decide whether you will be wise or not. Whether you will pray or you won't pray, you do it for yourself. Whether you visit or you don't visit, you do it for yourself. You will be standing there. You see, there's nobody in the church. Every church has grown wild. <clears throat> Everybody is looking for members. Are you listening? If thou be wise. Now, when it comes to soul winning, uh, if you are wise to be a soul winner, you are going to do it for yourself. You, I'm telling you. Now, wisdom is such that there are so many implications of any instruction that God gives. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 1. How many are going to walk in the wisdom of soul winning? Amen. Yeah. Every pastor must be concerned about the soul, not about education, not about water and sewage, not about money, but about people that are going to hell. Hmm. Verse 5. A wise man will hear, will hear, and increase learning. Amen. Amen. The first sign of wisdom is that you even hear what is being said. You even hear it. You see, because a foolish man will not even listen. He won't even listen. 
They, they, won't, they, they won't even bother to listen. Yeah. And you see them sometimes sitting in the church. The person thinks that he knows everything. He knows what you are going to say. He knows what you have said and what you are going to say. And that is why, you know, the Lord said to me one time when I was sitting in front of Kenneth Hagin, he was preaching. Listen, you will learn something. Because a wise man will hear. A person who is not wise, he doesn't even listen. I see pastors, they are not doing well. They will not even listen to messages. They don't even hear anything. But the Bible says a wise man will hear. A wise man is hearing. A foolish man doesn't hear and he doesn't even know what is going on. How can you be affected by 30 minute sermon on Sunday morning? And for the rest of the time, listening to all sorts of other things. It can never affect you spiritually. A wise man will hear. And amazingly, a wise man, the Bible says, will increase learning. He will learn more. So when you speak to a wise man, you recognize that he's learning something from what you are saying. But the foolish man doesn't learn anything. You talk and talk, and you know, you, you can see. That's what the, the opposite of it is. The Bible says that if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, the opposite of hearing and being wise is that people are laughing at you in their head that you are talking too much. We know what you are saying. Because that's why he said that if thou be wise, thou be wise for thyself. But uh, if thou scornest, now if you laugh at what the advice they are giving, if you scorn, you alone will bear it. And that is what God wants. You will bear the stupidity of your behavior alone. Yeah. God is going to single us out for us to bear it. And that is why privatization and delinking of people and their activities. So that do, if you do it, you do it for yourself. Because a prosperous person who is successful, when he earns less, it doesn't make you earn more. This is what people don't know. When he works less so that he earns less, it doesn't make a person who doesn't work earn more. If Bill Gates reduces his, okay, don't design any more computer from now till December. It's not going to make us richer. This is amazing. So if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. And amazingly, a wise person will hear. So you see that a wise person is ready to listen. And he will increase. That means what he's learning to become, he will learn more. You, you talk to a wise person, he's learned something just now. You talk to a fool, see that he's not learned anything. You talk to a fool, he said, I know this already. You talk to a fool, they say, oh, I, 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 I heard this, whatever. This is how fools are. And the Bible says, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. When we go to heaven, every one of us will be stripped of our connections. Even husband and wife will not be together again. You may have married seven times. There will be, there's no, conf- there's no problem at all when you get to heaven. No problem at all. You can marry seven times. Jesus made it clear. No problem. Because that relationship is not going to be continued. It's over. As soon as you are, you are dead, it's till death has do part. Don't forget what you said. Death ends that relationship. That whole arrangement is over. Till death has do part. Death is the end of that arrangement. You are no more having that arrangement. As soon as you land in heaven, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. Not for thyself and thy spouse, thyself and thy husband, thyself and thy wife, thyself. Your wisdom is personal, personal. That's why even on earth, you better analyze your life very carefully. And do things, don't don't do things like it's a group. All of us are doing this. We are doing this. We, me and me and me, we are going here. We are doing this. There's no group in heaven. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you are called, be called for yourself. When God called me, I, I decided to obey. I didn't go with any group from medical school. 
In fact, all the group that I thought were with me, they all, all of them left. And I found myself alone. Because if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. And that is why sometimes you see that people who have not been wise want to bring the person who has been wise down to the level. Let's all be at the same level. Recently, the managing director of Barclays Bank in, I think, England, I think it was the end of year bonus, they were giving him 30 million pounds or so, or some amount, like some amount, I don't know the figure, but something like 30 million pounds and, or 80 million pounds, some amount. And they were, they were fighting, they were, they were opposing it. Why? This and that and that. And the man stood firm. He said, no way. I deserve it. I've worked. Yeah, I've been wise for myself. And I deserve it. Yeah. You all want to come and say, because that profit, that 30 million pounds, is a percentage. of it's a, it's a calculated percentage of the profit of what he has been the managing supervisor of. It's not just uh, arbitrary figures that are they calculate it based on what you have been doing. Yeah. And some people wanted to come for his thing. He said, no way. No way. I've been wise for myself. I'll eat it. The government and all they wanted to take him on. He said, no way. I've been wise. I've been wise for myself. And he stood his ground and defended it. He said, it's not extravagant. It's not too much. It's not overboard. It's not whatever. It is what I deserve. And when he collected it, then he gave it as a donation to charity. Yeah. He's it's making the point. It's not that you can't just come and say, we don't deserve the, we should whatever. If you be wise, you are wise for yourself. I don't, you don't, they don't even need it. They cannot, it doesn't do anything to them. Yeah. You see, that's the point that I'm making. That if you take the wisdom of God, that it is so winning that is wisdom. Not having a master's degree at Methodist University. That is wise. And I, I thank God I've been to school. Because if I hadn't been to school, when I say this, you say that, oh, an educated man, or oh, you're against education. I haven't been to school. So I'm against education. Yeah. I'm trying to bring people down. So that we are all the same. But I've been to I've been to university. And the time that I went to university, there was nothing like Methodist University, SDA University, Valley View University, Central University, Pentecost University, Maranatha University, Regent University, Ashasi University. There was nothing like that. There was not even two medical schools in Ghana, only one. 50 people in one class. Yeah. And that's the time that I went to university. That's the era that I went to university. And we were interviewed. And, and I was taken without interview for the first 10 in the whole country. The interview did not matter. It was automatic. And I was the fifth person in the whole, the whole country to be interviewed. Yeah. To enter medical. Wait. To enter medical school. I'm saying it because I've got credentials as far as education is concerned. Because many of you, the, the courses you do, even when you, when you speak, you don't speak English well. Yeah, you don't speak English well. The type of, listen, the type of graduate that you are, you know, a poor, just a poor Bisa kind of JSS, JSS, SS graduates, you can't even speak English well. You can't do anything. You can't do anything unless you are re-educated. You know yourself, how poor quality, just a poor son, just collecting whatever, writing essays and doing things, funny things. We know. You think, even when we speak to you, we can feel it, that your education is so low. Yeah, I'm saying in my day, in my day, when I went to university, that's the time that I went to university, if you want to know. So when I tell you that I agree with the Bible, that it is winning of soul, that is wisdom. Yeah, I agree with the Bible. And I have the credential to agree with it. With it. Yeah. So some other pastor, some other pastor would be afraid to say it. But when he says it, he says, brother, unko school, isn't it? You have not been to school. So, you know, 
you are, you, are, you are fighting education. I'm not fighting education. I've been to school. I've been there. My doctor is not this $200 degree from uh, America that you buy post. You get PhD by when they call you doc or doctor. It's the medical seven years universe, seven good years for MBCHB, seven years, 1982 to 19. That's how I got the DR by my name. If you want to know, it's not a $200 from America, whatever that is, then you'll be calling you doc or doctor. No, 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 no. Seven years of working. Yeah. And I'm explaining to you when I speak and I say that I am agreeing with the Bible. Mr. Big Stuff, that if you win souls, you are wise. I agree. I agree that that is wisdom. I'll spend, I'll spend my life, I'll spend my life to win souls. And all men will find out at the end that indeed to win souls is a wise thing. And that's why I want to encourage everybody here. Eh? Not to do any work in this life apart from working for God. This is my encouragement to you. Yeah. Apart from working for God, there is no wiser job to do. <laughs> you, you think you will not struggle when you do other jobs, but you will struggle when you work for God. No. You will struggle everywhere because the curse affects all forms of work. All forms of work are cursed, including soul winning and all these other jobs. It says, in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat. I'm a pastor. I've been sweating. I've been sweating. And now, even now, I'm sweating. Ah, it's not easy to eat. And if I was doing some other job, I would also sweat. I'm sweating I have a car, I have somewhere to stay, I drive, I work, I'm sweating. It's as if I was working somewhere else, I will also be sweating. And the same thing, eating, drinking, moving. So if you are wise, don't laugh at me. That's why, that's why I went to town to explain my credentials as far as schooling is concerned. A wise man will hear. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. In other words, he will receive or acquire advice. I, I am giving you advice. I am giving you advice. I've been to school and finished. It's not this method, this unit, SDA, Valley View, Regent, whatever. We are talking, I went to Legon, University of Ghana, before it was corrupted up to the level that it is now. Yeah. <laughs> You say, how do I know? From the products. Yeah. From the products. We are working with the products all the time. We see them. They can't speak English. They cannot write essay. They cannot write English. We see them. It's not about anything. You just have to see the product. Then you know that. Mm, which school did you go to? <laughs> Listen to advice. Now, to understand a proverb. You see, when you are wise, you understand proverbs. Now, he that winneth souls is wise. It's a proverb. <laughs> it's a proverb. It is a proverb in the Bible. And a proverb is not something you will easily understand or easily see or easily see through. Amen. Are you listening to me? It's not something that you easily understand or easily see. And the interpretation of it. You see, there is an interpretation to this proverb that he that winneth souls is wise. There's a meaning. There's a great meaning. But that meaning is not obvious. Amen. Amen. That meaning is not obvious. It's not obvious to see that somebody that wins souls is wise. That's why I'm saying it clearly. Because it's not obvious. It's obvious that anybody who wins souls, anybody who goes to work at Barclays Bank is wise. It, it looks obvious. When you say somebody has a degree, second 
degree, third degree. It, it's, that's obvious. It's obvious that it's wise. But when you say somebody's winning souls, it's wise. It's not obvious. It needs to be interpreted. You need to, you, you need to understand it's, 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 it is a proverb. It has an interpretation. And then the fourth thing, the third thing about it is that is the words, they are the words of a wise person. And it is a dark saying. And they are dark saying. That means that you can look into it, you can't see. If I look this way, it's dark. I can't see far. If it was the day, I would see the chairs in the Jesus Cathedral. But when I look, I just see black. So, in other words, it's a saying so deep that when you look at it, you don't see far. It's a saying so profound that when you look at it and you try to understand, you can't even understand or receive the understanding that if that wind souls is wise. That's why I have to say it with such strength and introduce myself to you as an educated person. Introduce my doctor that he would miss as education, not something else. Because it's, it's such a profound statement. Right. It, it has such implications. It's a dark saying. It's, it's, it's something that when you say that uh, actions speak louder than words. It's a profound saying. It, it has very great implications. Actions speak louder than words. There perhaps is no more profound statement than that one. In life, you will go on and find out that actions speak louder than words. That evidence of what somebody has done or is doing speaks far more than what he says. That doctor is just like the government. We have had since 1957. They have been ruling us till now. Actions speak louder than all their speeches. In fact, the other day I was even wondering whether I should vote. It's true. So when I see them arguing, on t- I don't even have time to listen to what they are saying. Actions speak that it's, it means so. It's a dark when you look and say, What does it mean? But life will show you what it means. That's right. So when the Bible says that he that wins souls is what it's, it's such a deep saying. When a man has three children, one is a lawyer. One is a doctor and one is a pastor. And on his deathbed, one of his last words is to turn to the pastor and say to him, you did the right thing. Not to the doctor, not to the lawyer, but to the pastor. And this was somebody said, as he's just going out of this world, at the age of 70, he turns to the pastor. You have, you have a doctor, you have a lawyer, you have a pastor. And you turn to the pastor and say, you did the right thing. You will, never, you will never know the meaning of it. Perhaps it is eternity that will explain. When you say, he that witness us, well, that's all I have to say. There's nothing else to say. Perhaps it is heaven. When you are right there and you see what it meant to win a soul in heaven. When the Bible says, when one sinner is won, there is great rejoicing in heaven. You would have thought that, ah! I wish I had one more. Yay! Wish I could just do one more door to door. Just one more witnessing. One more. If I would talk to one more person. Oh, what if I talk to one more person? I would have gone to this level. Eesh! But I was busy. I, I, I thought that going to Methodist University is wise. <laughs> But I thought that getting my master's degree is wise. Going abroad is wise. All these things are wise. Not knowing that it was he that witnessed those words. Well, it was a proverb with an interpretation. It was a proverb. It's a proverb. Proverbs 11, verse 10. It's a proverb. It's a dark saying. When you look at it, you will not know what it means. You will look at it. Say, what does it mean? He that witnessed those is wise. He that witnessed those is wise. Does it mean he will be rich? If he wins, so he will be rich. What does it mean? <laughs> It's a dark saying. It's a, and he that has understanding will attain to these wise counsels or these wise advices. He will start taking them. So, wow, he that witnesses those is wise. Not he that breaketh churches. 
He that orangulizes his wife. He that start his own ministry. Because people want either independent. No, they don't even want to win, so they just want independence. Yeah. Which one is more important, to win souls or to have independence? Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what I have to tell you tonight. Is that to be a soul winner is a very wise thing. But because it's a proverb, the interpretation is not easy. And because it is a, a word of a wise, and it's a dark saying, perhaps it is heaven that you will wake up and say, my God, my God, my God. I wish, I wish. <sighs> is Dr. Go here by any chance? Ah. He was telling us the other day of an exam he did, A-level. When he went into the exam, I don't know whether it's chemistry or physics. Was it chemistry? Chemistry. And it was uh, five questions. One compulsory. No, it's one and four. That was what he had. One question and four others. Isn't it? Yeah. But his mind was four questions. And so he sat there, his A-level, and he wrote first questions, one, and two, and three, and four. His mind was one and four. You have to do one and four other questions, one and three other questions, which is four questions. So the word four was in his mind, a total of four, as against one and four, compulsory one and other four. Do you understand how the confusion came? The word four was in the head. So it's one plus three, or... Four. <laughs> and so he did it. He wrote. He told us. He finished everything. And he looked around. People were writing. People were calling for paper. And he had finished. He said, I'm okay. I finished. And he checked. He went through one and three, which is four. Not that, not that they say. It's what he told me practically. One and three. He went to A level. Checking. He's done everything. Look around. People are writing. Why? <laughs> so, in the end, he just knew that, look, there's nothing else to do. He, he, he knows it. And he just got up and gave in his paper. And he went out. And then afterwards, the people were, came out. And as they were talking, he said, yeah, you know, the fifth question, whatever. I said. He said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Five questions. Well, yeah, the fifth question, the one and the four. The, the four, he said, no, the one and three, said, no, it's four questions. It's, no, it's not four questions, it's one question and four questions. Nothing. He could, I, I am sure he wanted to urinate over himself. Hey! Because you could have. He knew it. He knew every he had time. He was looking around. So why, why are they struggling? What are they doing? Why are they winning souls? What are they, why, what are they, why are they zealous? What are, what, what, are they, what are they up to? Why are they doing another outreach? Why are they doing another meeting? Why, why are they talking to people? What is it? What again do they want? They know, they know. He look around and ah, it's okay. It's okay. And he turns out to point, just look. It's okay. Just took his things and look. It's all right. It has happened to me before. Different exams. I've been to. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. One day, somebody saw me coming from Kolebu to Legon. He saw me on a bus. And he said, when I saw you, I knew that somebody has died. He said, no, it was an exam I was coming from. It was an exam. My worst exam ever. Yeah. And you remember. 
One day I went for an exam and they asked me a question in um, pharmacology, my final exam. And they asked me, and they asked, do you know about such and such? I don't, even, I don't remember it now because I chewed it very well by that time. <laughs> so I said, do you know about such and such? I was quiet for some time. I said, no, I don't know. Are you sure you don't know? Examiners from Nigeria, different, they were all the final exam. Are you sure you don't know? I said, sir, no, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and they asked me another question. Okay, young man, do you know? This and this, they asked me the same question in another way. I look at him and said, sir, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know anything about it. Then they asked me again, and they stayed with me on that question until almost the end of the exam. And they said, well, young man, you wrote an excellent essay on this. And they showed, this is my essay. My essay was in front. <laughs> me, they showed me. You wrote an excellent essay. What, what you say, you don't know? You can't remember? You don't know anything about it? It is in front of us. My, my mind was totally blank. I couldn't remember anything. And suddenly I heard, bang, bang, finish. And I came out. Hey. And then when I came out, and I remembered the whole essay and everything. <laughs> hey. What a shock. So, dear friends, I pray when you go to heaven, they will not ask you, do you know, do you know so winning? Well? Do you know so when? Okay. Do you know proverbs? You say, hmm. You do proverbs. But you didn't write it. Question one. You did question one and one. Then there were five questions. You stopped winning souls. Because you are now into so many other things. You are now mature. And you call your backsliding maturity. Yeah. Today, backsliding pastors are called mature. Yeah. But sledding pastors, we are called mature. When you look like you are into psychology and philosophy, it's like he's mature. So he speaks very high words. One day somebody heard me preach, he said, Ah, but is this preaching? Is this preaching? You can understand everything. Is it preaching? Is it preaching? He that winneth souls. Are you going to be wise? Yes. It's a dark saying. You can look at it and say, hey, how is he wise? It's not easy to see. But one day, one day over there on the other side, you'll be so glad. But remember, you will not be able to come back. Yeah, you can't come back. So right. How many times I've wanted to run back in and say, Oh, sir, I know all, all that you're asking me. <laughs> it's too late. Only what you can remember at that moment will benefit you. So do it. And do it now. Spend your life winning souls, planting churches, working for God. Even as a lay person, give yourself to doing the work of God, making people come to know Jesus Christ. Don't be, don't, God has not sent you to be the bank manager of the world. He has sent you to win souls. Go out and bring people to God and to Christ. Don't change your message because everybody is changing their message. The church is always the church. It will ne- the main thing is the main thing is wisdom. And I want to maintain wisdom and preaching. When we went to Niger to preach, the pastors couldn't believe that we would come there. They said, you people in the south, you have kept the gospel by the sea. You have played games with it and left us up here to perish. And we are, we are at the mercy of other religions and other things. As you play games and quarrel amongst yourself in the south by the sea. As we not go out to win souls. But the time has come for us to be wise again and do the work of the Lord. And God will bless us. Stand to your feet.
Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lift your hand and just pray for wisdom. The Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask. And God will give that wisdom. Ask. Sandolo mo kabaranda la babanda le debe bende le debe bende. Yambo la ma chandele beke manda la baba. Le mere be le simba la la mamande le be. Thank you for the dark saying, the proverb, the, the interpretation. Proverb. Thank you for your blessing. Yes. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Shandele me. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Ask Him for wisdom. Father, may we be wise and may we be filled with your wisdom. Speak to the Lord. Father, Shandolo Mokabarama. Pere Malamana Sandola Mamana. That we may not find that there are more souls we wish we had won, more things we wish we had done. Thank you for this great blessing, encouragement to do your perfect will. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying, Lord. Father, thank you for the blessing of your word. What a blessing it is to know you, to serve you, to follow you. Guide us, O oh Lord. Let your perfect will be done. We love you. We want to spend all our lives being wise. If we are wise, we are wise by ourselves. Thank you. If we win souls, if we win souls for ourselves, we will benefit from doing it. We thank you for this great opportunity and blessing. Release into the hearts of your children the spirit of true wisdom. Thank you for this blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. You may be seated. Take out your offering. I want us to give a special soul winning. Anybody who uses his money for soul winning. And this particular offering is a soul winning offering. Hello? Of all the offerings you give, giving to this, to that, to that, to whatever, this is the best thing you can do with your money. Did you hear me? I'm a pastor. The church is the work that I'm doing. And I'm telling you that among the things within the church that you can give to, the best, the best you can give to is soul winning. The best segment of the church to support. I'm just giving you a tip. Let's say one day you have the opportunity. Soul winning, uh, offering to buy the organ, the church offering for to help this group of people offering to help this group offering for what the best is to win souls if ever you have a chance or an option you know which one is it like voting you know one two three for which one i'm showing you the one to put your thumb on is what so winning why because that's why jesus came Everything is when we when we show kindness to the poor is because of soul winning. Ultimately, we are showing them that God is love. That's that's why we love prisoners. We, we, we that's why we care for them. We don't ask them for anything. We love them. We care for them because God is love. So it's the God who is loving, who is telling them to come to Him. Come to me, all you that labor. The God who cares for the sick, the God who cares for poor people, the God who cares for everybody. And shows you that he cares through his servants who are showing you love is the one who is saying, Come to me, all ye that labor. That is why we care for all these people. That's why we care for homeless. 
children, everybody. We do all these things because it's showing how God is. That's the nature of God. God is a loving God and a kind God. And he's saying, come to me. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Amen. So all the works that we do is for this reason. Because this is why Christ came to this world to save sinners. God sent not his son into the world to condemn, but that the world should be saved through him. This is why God sent his son into the world. You see, you can't shift from it. You can't change it. It will always be the same. And when we backslide, God will raise up somebody to come and say it. Yeah. Amen. Lift up your offering and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give to this great work. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, take out your boosters. Do you have boosters or the offering was a booster? You, you look like the offering is a booster. Or you don't have any more offering to give. Find a booster, find some coins, find something to add to your offering. And God will bless you. Lift it up and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the offerings, for the boosters. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, ashes, receive the offering. There's a land where the streets are made of gold and all the people sing and dance around the throne so many times I feel a ache down in my heart just longing for Beyond the sky, I'll do.
Hallelujah. Why don't you put your hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah. Wonderful. What a service. Believe that these meetings are like revival meetings. God is reviving us with some powerful, powerful truths that we cannot run away from. And we are praying to God that God will keep Bishop, keep on giving Bishop this message so that God, will, those of us who are backsliding will repent. Amen. I want to tell Bishop not to stop preaching such messages. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because this is what the church is about. Amen. And I believe that as we hear this word and open our hearts more and more to God and allow God to work in our lives, we will see, we will take the right decisions and we'll believe what the Bible says. He that willing so is wise. That this one will believe it. Will not get to the other side and say, Ash. If only I have one more chance to preach to one more person, what a difference would have been. Let's turn to our feet, please. CDs are available. Buy the CDs. Pick them up. Take them. Soak them in. Pray with them. I should pray. God will be impressing some things in your heart. And I believe that we are going to See God's heaven, God's blessing. Amen. Next week, by the grace of God, we are going to be here again. Amen. Until otherwise stated, every Sunday night, we are here by the grace of God. Amen. If it will not come up, we'll tell you. But every Sunday night is coming up. Take it like that. And I tell you something. By the end of this season, God will raise some evangelists among us. Some preachers are coming among us. Amen. This meeting is not to raise bank managers and financial gurus and beauty queens and hairdressers. It's for evangelists. May he become a soul winner. That's why it's called soul winner service. May God work on our hearts in the name of Jesus. Hold your neighbor's hand. So to ask him, are you becoming a soul winner? Or you are becoming a psychologist? Or you are becoming a a mass teacher, or oh, you want to become a doctor or a lawyer? Uh, oh. What are you asking? What are you becoming? 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 Or oh, you are becoming a shoe shine boy? Or oh, you are becoming a husband or a wife? May you be a soul winner from today in the name of Jesus. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, the fellowship, the contribution, and the participation of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. God bless you. See you.